listening to Milky Mounds as she watched the taut young men playing volleyball on the beach, their bathing trunks stretched tight over their straining manhood. I mean, what the hell is that all about? Who's publishing this thing? Arthur Salzberger or Al Goldstein? And the Times, catching all kinds of flack now, comes up with a single stupidest, lamest excuse anybody has ever heard of. They decided to release this woman's name because somebody else did it first. And besides, a lot of people down there in Palm Beach knew who she was anyway. That is justification for letting the whole country know who she is? Pardon me, Joseph Pulitzer, but I don't think so. In the first place, who was this other person? party who decided to release the name first. Michael Gartner, the head of NBC News, who signs memos with a thumbprint and has behind his title, Certifiable Idiot. I mean, you can almost forgive Gartner because he just doesn't have a clue. He's just pathetic. But the Times? Come on. And what is one of the salacious tidbits the Times profile piece reported? Get this, that the alleged victim has a bad driving record. Hello? Wake up call? Are you sh me? A newspaper doing a story involving Ted Kennedy commenting on someone else's performance behind the wheel? Hello? Earth to Chappaquiddick! <laughs> No, something happened at the Times in this instance, I'm afraid. Yeah. The old gray lady was in a miniskirt, snapping her gum, twirling a Gucci bag, mm. with a varicose veined leg hooked over a guardrail at the Lincoln Tunnel as she uh, attempted to broaden her circulation, <laughs> if you get my drift. <laughs> Better rewrite that masthead from all the news that's fit to print to, Hey, sailor, want to go out? Dean <laughs> Kirkpatrick, thank you very much. I'm a sin the morning. In the morning. <laughs> I'm uh, turning my attention first today, Donald, to the increasingly turbid political situation in the Soviet Union. Turbid? Yes. What does that mean? Search me, but it sounds good, doesn't it? Well. Turbid. <laughs> Teenage mutant ninja turbids. I don't know what it is. Anyway, <laughs> President Mikhail Gorbachev uh, yielded significantly to the Soviet Republic's demands for power sharing, promising revisions of his highly unpopular price and tax programs, while at the same time announcing a radical enhancement of their role what the hell am I talking about? Yeah. I mean, who cares what happens in the Soviet Union when the Judds are breaking up right here? Oh, yeah. Issue one, the Judds. Country Music Awards, a tearful parting of the popular mother-daughter duo, Naomi and Winona. <laughs> in my view, however, I can't account for the distress there, J.D., because looking at Winona, she could split again already like a f***ing amoeba, you know what I mean? And still have enough left over to form a backup group for God's sake. And Johnny Cash, a true American institution. Yeah. Got that uh, Pioneer Award thing? Right. It wasn't for his pioneering work in hair transplantation. We can be perfectly certain of that. <laughs> Jesus, it looked like he'd been groomed by chimpanzees looking for dust mites, didn't it? <laughs> Speaking of dog-eared, issue two, Michelle Casson, the young Palm Beach woman who's attached herself like a leech to the latest Kennedy misfortune. This is a woman the senior senator from Massachusetts picked up. Well, Why? The girl who'd been hit in the face with a snow shovel was already taken? <laughs> God almighty. Issue four. The new test for assessing the condition of the prostate gland. Simple blood test, Imo. Much more accurate results, too. Oh, yeah. Now, I know that you'd be terribly disappointed, as would I, if the new test obviated the need for the familiar uh, <laughs> digital examination. But don't worry. They're saying the new procedure works best when combined with the old way. Uh, have you uh, had one recently? Uh, no. I have. <laughs> I can see now why some women fall in love with their gynecologists. <laughs> Remember the old Captain and Tennille tune? Do that to me one more time. Whoops. <laughs> anyway, issue, uh, what are we up to here? Five? Hmm. Yes, yes. Issue five. Back to issue one, Soviet Union and the new foreign minister there, Alexander Besmertnik. What the hell kind of name is Besmirtnik? Well, <laughs> Sounds like something Ted Kennedy would date. For Christ's sake, Al, buy a vowel or something, okay? You darn near caused Tom Brokaw to swallow his own nose last night before the paramedics could get to him. Did you see Tom trying to stump break that name last night? Yeah. Pitiful, huh? He looked like Mel Tillis sucking a lemon out of an Evinrood at an elocution class for epileptics. <laughs> Trey f***ed up, you know? <laughs> kind of like you taking on regularly. <laughs> I think both of you guys are about ready for a counter position at Mickey D's. Anyway, Amo, that's the opinion of this senior analyst, the once and future president of the United States, who is 
out of here. I'm a in the morning. Yeah, as bad as cousin and a federal housing loan. <laughs> <laughs> but our baby driver talk about Saddam Hussein. Yeah, the lights is on, but ain't nobody home. <laughs> <laughs> And senior political analyst Richard M. Nixon. Uh, thank you. I must in the morning. <laughs> well, now, where to begin? So many miscreants, so little time, <laughs> as I like to say. <laughs> Senator Al D'Amato, the uh, HUD stud, as it were. HUD stud? Let's see. His uh, colleague from Virginia, Senator Charles Throb. No, no, that's uh, Charles Robb with an R. Uh, uh, that's where you're wrong, I'm. Well, believe me, if the stories I'm hearing are true, she was bobbing and he was throbbing. Oh, yeah. I guess we might as well begin there, Donald, with yet another top-flight Democrat, Rob of Virginia, in a sexual scrape. Yeah. Now, the story is that Rob, uh, when governor of Virginia, partied with drug users and was involved uh, hokey-dokey style, shall we say, <laughs> with a former Miss Virginia who has a name like something you'd order from a bar, uh, Ty Collins. <laughs> Come to think of it, he probably did order her from a bar, following the methodology now laid down for U.S. Senators by the father of philanderers, Massachusetts Edward Kennedy. <laughs> anyway, Senator Robb, whose wife Linda is the daughter of the late Lyndon Johnson, and gee, wasn't he a treat. The senator says the only thing he got from Ty was a motel room massage. <laughs> oh, good. That sure clears everything up in my mind, eh? Of course, to be fair here, I'm... Uh, uh, he is married to Linda Bird Johnson. And you'd probably be concerned with your Johnson, too. Were you facing that catastrophe every morning, in my view? But uh, too much time on the Rob Report. Um, as you two. Yeah. Alphonse, any messages? D'Amato. <laughs> uh, Dick Nixon's thoughts. Put some distance between yourself and the senator, Imo. I saw the 60 Minutes piece. Jesus, this guy is one FBI bug from becoming the Lou Messer Cola of Capitol Hill, <laughs> getting kidnapped from a suburban supermarket, and then writing hate mail from Allenwood. <laughs> Issue three. Mayor Dinkins. Right. Big expose in the Daily News reveals Dinkins averages about three hours per day actually working on city business. Mm -hmm. uh, here's my counsel to the mayor. Lay chili. Cut it back to like maybe an hour, hour and a quarter, babe, because whatever you're doing now is killing us. <laughs> or what the hell, just turn it all over to Al D'Amato. Mm -hmm. At least this guy knows which buttons to push to get the f***ing trash picked up right <laughs> Jesus. Okay, issue four. Yeah. The latest flap right here at your radio station. Uh, Mets manager Buddy Harrelson no longer wants to do his report with program host Howie Rose, as I understand it. Right. Well, the obvious question here, Imo, who would? I mean, what a nerd, huh? <laughs> Who is Howie Rose to question anything? Buddy Harrelson needs this fly spec, second-guessing what he's doing with the Mets? Yeah. Yeah. I'm coming squarely down in your corner on this one, J.D. I want to fight him. Oh, uh, very quickly, uh, speaking of baseball, Oakland A's outfielder Ricky Henderson. Isn't it fitting, Imo, that Ricky Henderson would receive recognition for an activity that involves stealing? <laughs> because believe you me, if it weren't bases, it'd be radios with this thug. Now there is a homie with a two. <laughs> and that's opinion, Donald. The HUD stud to Sticky Ricky. Uh, from Tricky Dicky, now that I think about it. <laughs> a former president of the United States. I must in the morning. You don't f***ing let us land. <laughs> you comprend, eh? We're scratching. Quite an improvement. Huh? Unmistakable. Meantime, another safety situation in the top stories. Despite a crippling fire, the main Yankee nuclear plant is said to be in no danger this morning. For an update, we switch live to Imus and Washington's Diane Sawyer on the scene in Wiscasset, Maine. Here at the Wiscasset Yankee site, plant manager Kenneth Moldaver has joined me to discuss any potential hazard. Mr. Moldaver, let me first ask you, how's my hair? <laughs> has a lock fallen coquettishly across my forehead again, causing you to experience a slight rise, a bulging, as it were, in your shorts? Uh, hello, Diane. <laughs> Diane Sawyer. Well, let's move down a state or so. Huh? With his hometown as a backdrop, former Massachusetts Senator Paul Tsongas has launched his long-shot bid to unseat President George Bush. At the White House, Mr. Bush, still riding high in the polls, was asked for his reaction to the Tsongas candidacy. Well, let's, uh, let's see if I have it figured out. We've got another Greek from Massachusetts, liberal. Makes me kind of wonder whether Willie Horton wouldn't like to take in a movie or something this weekend. 
or maybe, what the hell, <laughs> Willie Kennedy Smith, for that matter. Right, Bart? <laughs> In Hollywood, a group of prominent actors supporting the Brady Bill gun control legislation have announced they will support a companion measure just introduced this week. The Brady Bunch Bill. It calls for the killing of former sitcom child stars before they can create further mayhem and havoc. And we conclude this evening with a commentary from essayist Andy Rooney. After learning of his three testicles, his shutting of underwear, and other non-mainstream <laughs> sexual proclivities, <laughs> listeners were startled to hear radio's Don Imus reveal that he once picked up and groped a transvestite in a Los Angeles bar frequented by homosexuals. <laughs> Imus himself gave the account of the incident while recounting a comment the singer Madonna Chacon made in an interview in a gay newspaper. Ms. Chacon had regaled a reporter with a whole menu of her own sex philosophies, along with this little beauty that every straight guy should have a man's tongue in his mouth at least once, and that in turn triggered the high man's story. Makes you wonder what else lies hidden in that old Imus diary, eh? <laughs> Let me give it a try here. <clears throat> Yo, Imus, here's one for you. <clears throat> no straight guy should go to his grave without playing Johnny on the Pony at least once with a guy who looks like Lowell Wiker at a nude taffy paw. <laughs> there you go. I don't know about you, but I think I am going to stay tuned. Imus in the morning. Rock Cafe. That was one of my personal favorites. A taste of honey with the platinum classic Boogie Oogie Oogie. Used to set a lot of dance floors on fire with that one in 78. Speaking of that, I can't tell you how disappointed I was to see that little popcorn fart homo from New Kids on the Block, Donnie Wahlberg, get off on that arson rap in Kentucky, sets a fire in a hotel room with a bottle of vodka, gets off with community service, could have been the new kid on the cell block. That would have been something, huh? <laughs> Bunch of toothless goobers there out of deliverance, Kentucky jail cell. Hey, kid, come here. <laughs> oh, 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 you got the right stuff. <laughs> Other news from the world of rock and roll. Oh. Wilson Phillips has a version of You're in Love recorded in Spanish, which is a good idea, I guess, so now Puerto Ricans can hate him, too. <laughs> Mira la chica elefante. <laughs> well, of course she's fat. I mean, dear old man wore diapers and sat in a sandbox in the living room. You need Twinkies by the f***ing truckload. <laughs> Speaking of trucking, yeah. Grateful Dead got a new double CD live set out. Some concert in 70 in case you need another version of Casey Jones. <laughs> if 30 separate takes on Uncle John's band ain't enough, hey... Been watching the local news shows lately. Got their sweeps going on. So you can get all those hard news stories like bread bags that kill. <laughs> Speaking of bags, don't miss Betty Furness. Blow the cover off the dog food industry. Kind of fitting old Betty should do something on dog food, huh? <laughs> she, I, I heard she went on location for this thing and a cocker spaniel tried to bury her. She, does she sleep in a sarcasm? Alphagus? I mean, gotta be a little annoying when everywhere you go, people are trying to throw dirt on you. I mean, Betty, you're a consumer advocate. Go after your plastic surgeon for crying out loud. They're firing babes off of news shows left and right for not being good-looking enough, and here you are, like a sun-dried tomato in a pantsuit, whining about the DDT and doggy dirt. First of all, they're f***ing dogs, okay? They don't know how hydrogenated sodium from a pile of horse <laughs> All they know is, if it's smaller than their head and it don't eat them first, they eat it. <laughs> he don't care what the hell he puts in his mouth, he licks his own <laughs> for crying out loud. He's not, I mean, think about it. That's fine. I mean, I'm a sit over here with Scott Muni. I'll be fine, Scott. I'd lick mine if I could do it. <laughs> I'm sure you would. <laughs> I'd never stop. I must in the morning. Science and my stomach telling me something was good tasting and good for me, too. Well, that's great, Mr. Brimley. All we have to do is read the tagline and we're out of here. All righty, here she goes. Quaker Oats Oatmeal. 
Now scientific research says you can't get a better boner. No, 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 Mr. Billy, that's bonus with an S. No, no, that's boner with an R, son. No, 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 no. what do you mean by boner? Well, let me just show you. I'll stand up a minute. No, no, no. Uh-oh. Oh, I'm sorry, I knocked the table over Damn. there. Now, what do you call that, son, a corn dog? No. That's a boner, boy. A table-banging basic boner. Yeah. Well, that's the ticket, kids. You have mom shoot a nice, hot, steaming, sexy bowl of dreamy, creamy oatmeal in front of you, and you'll be saying, hey, who's running this survey, Quaker Oats or Dr. Ruth? I'm my own test case. My cholesterol's under control. I'm 99 years old, and I got a boner you could tow a car away with. There's your oatmeal bonus. You want to impress little Susie next door? No. You start your day with Quaker Oats, then invite her over for a little game of unauthorized biography. No, no. She'll take one look and say, hey, big time, are you repelling a scud attack or are you just glad to see me? No, she By the way, a bowl can be a bore. Huh? You tell mom you'll take your oatmeal in a lab beaker, <laughs> or better yet, one of these. You see this, kids? You get down to the bottom here, and instead of saying, all gone, look at that. A little picture of Teddy Kennedy saying, all right. <laughs> you can't go wrong. Lab beaker or Teddy Bowl, Quaker Oats, it's the right thing to do. I'm a in the morning. Nixon. Okay, I man, how do I get in on this deal to become your neighbor there in Southport? Huh? What do I got to do? Well, uh, people have to write a 250-word essay. No, you know, no, no, nix all that stuff. I mean, what do I got to do? You know, grease somebody, <laughs> slip the old I man some upfront whip out. What? Just tell me. Well, first of all, you're not eligible since you appear on the program. Well, change the rules. <laughs> well, they're federal regulations. Oh, screw them! They're meaningless. I should know. <laughs> now listen, JD. I had to give up my place there in prestigious Upper Saddle River, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Had to move out. And where am I now? Nearly homeless. And you've got the opportunity right in front of you to take me away from all this. I mean, I've got that sideshow family of mine. You know, Pat and those deliverance daughters. Jits and Zits, or whatever the hell their names are. Jesus, talk about having a couple of links missing on the old DNA chain. Huh? you got to help me, Don. I'm old. I've got the phlebitis thing, right. much as the current president has the frog eye thing. You know? <laughs> and here you've got a contest in which I can win an abode in Southport, Connecticut. And with wheels yet. Yeah. It's perfect for me, Donnie. Come on. Can I win? No. What do you mean, no? It's your contest. Do like I did. Fix it. No, no, you can't win. <laughs> Please? No. For Christ's sakes, have a heart. I'm saying no. Are you telling me there is nothing we can work out here? Nothing. Well, f*** you. <laughs> That's right, f*** you, and the actor of vigor you wrote in on. Who the hell would want to be your neighbor anyway? Yeah. For two minutes, much less two weeks. Yeah. I'd rather live next door to Ted Bundy. <laughs> hell, Ted Kennedy. Oh, Jesus, what did I just say? <laughs> well, the hell with you. You're giving away two weeks in some sublet with a subcompact on the wrong side of some Connecticut backwater that let Phil Donahue move in. <laughs> oh, and what a nice townhouse the winner's going to get, huh? A grossly inflated fire trap over a Chapter 11 real estate office. <laughs> Tell me, uh, does cheese come with those mice? Or do the rodents have to fend for themselves, huh? <laughs> and an Acura Vigor? What's the matter? The Yugos were out of stock. <laughs> Believe me, folks, win this one quick before it's down to a Schwinn and 24 hours at the Q Motor Inn kicking addicts out of the doorways. <laughs> oh, I'm very disappointed in you, I'm well, very disappointed. Well. Don't enter, folks. It's a trap. <laughs> and that's opinion, Dotto, from a brand new advocate for the homeless, Dick Nixon, yeah. a former occupant, for Christ's sakes, of the White House already. I miss in the morning. Six, 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 six